Hello, Internet. Today we make a very big jump. We will jump from Graph Sage, a representational learning technology, to graph neural networks, where we ask ourselves, is it possible to apply a transformer model that has been so successful on NLP, also on graph neural networks. So let's start right in with a very important paper from September 2018, Inductive Representation Learning on Large Graph by Hamilton, Yink, and Leskovic. And we go here directly to the algorithm because we are already familiar with graph representational learning from my last video. And Graph Sage now has the main advantage. If you add nodes to your network, to your graph, like say you have a time series or you have a dynamic graph and you add one or more nodes, you do not always have to recalculate the whole embedding. Because, and this is the crux here, we have differentiable aggregator functions. And if we add a node, we have already aggregator functions that have learned when you add a node where the place where the embedding of this node in our vector space will be. So this is the great plus, this is the great advantage Graph Sage has over the other models, Node2Vec or DeepWalk models. And we will have a very short look at it on an abstract level, on the algorithm level. And here in the original publication, we say, okay, we have a graph V. We have our input features on the nodes. We have a certain depth key. This is a one hop or a two hop or a three hop on a particular path. We have our weight matrices W where for each K in our depth, in our hop, one hop, two hop, N hop, we have our nonlinearity function so that our neural network will be able to learn. And we have the main new thing, the aggregator functions that we learn that we well, finally will find aggregate K is here the short label for each and every K in the set of one to K. And you remember K is our depth parameter variable. And then since we are acting here on a neighborhood and we wanna encode the structure of the graph of a certain neighborhood, we have here a neighborhood functions for our specific node V. And the output of the graph sage algorithm is simply a vector representation Z vector set of our node V with all the structural and the node information encoded in this vector space. So easy, we have an, an outer loop for a K one to K. This is our depth parameter. And for every node V element of the set of V, we do the following two lines. At first, we have now to aggregate our neighborhood. And we do this that we say here with H and hold on a second, H to be the representation I assume, but I wanna just check it. The HK denotes a node representation at the first step. So H is a representation of the node in our uh, new vector space, the embedded space. So uh, here we were, before every uh, node U in the environment over our central node V, we have to do an aggregation of all the representation of the node U with the step K minus one. And then we have an aggregate function. This is a step at K and this value, this new vector, we insert in the concatenation of the representation of the node V, K minus one, and the representation of all the nodes aggregated of the neighborhood of V at the step K. Now there is a question that should this not be K minus one to be more concise, but Hey, I suppose this is the fourth version of this paper, so the author will get it right. So, and then we have the concatenation of these two vectors. 
of these two representation vectors. Then we calculate here the multiplication with our weight matrices. And for all, we apply a nonlinearity. And so we receive now the representation, the new representation of our node V at the step K. So a K hop is K1. This is the first hop, the first neighborhood we defined. And then you have some normalization and then you run all of this for the different case, one hop, two hops, three hops, whatever K is defined. And so you end up with a new representation in the embedded space of your node V, taking into consideration all the nodes of the environment of your specific node V, all the nodes U where you have an element in the environmental set, in the neighborhood set. Uh, if you read here carefully, and let's make it a little bit bigger, there is a slight inconsistency, I suppose, because you see that here he says that for each node V, aggregates the representation of the nodes in its immediate neighborhood, H, U at K minus one, and it aggregates this in a single vector, H from the environment, from the neighborhood of V at K minus one. But this single vector, H from the environment from V at K minus one, we have here the aggregation in our formula, in our structural presentation of the algorithm, we have here an H, the representation of the neighborhood of V at step K. And here, the documentation says at step K minus one. Hmm. Maybe a slight inconsistency, or I, I do not really understand what's going on. But okay, there is something happening here. We have to have a deeper look. But for the moment, I would like to show you this is graph sage just for the introduction very easily decodes the graph neighborhood of a specific nodes of all the neighborhoods of a node and if you ask now what are those aggregated functions you can see here that the original paper lists three aggregator the mean aggregator we just have the mean function an lstm aggregator and a simple pooling aggregator with all the different formulas here. So this is the original paper of Graf Sage, and it developed, of course, since 2018, but the main algorithm stays the same. And it is important that you know the algorithm of Graf Sage. But now we move on to some fascinating topic in a new mathematical presentation of symmetry and invariance and equivariance it's about permutation and this knowledge we will have, we will apply on graph neural network. And this is the second part of this video. Now, if we want to switch from graph sage with learnable differential functions to a transformer based graph model, a graph neural network model, we have to apply a little bit of theory first. There's an excellent presentation where I have the slides and I give you the, the URL of where you can download the slides for yourself from DeepMind, of course. The presenter is Peter Velikovic, one of the authors. I already showed you a publication in one of my last videos. And he is giving an excellent presentation on February 2021 on the theoretical foundations. And what is really nice, I would like to show you just some slides of it. They are close to 100 slides, but there is about some symmetry groups. And you know, last time we encountered symmetry, I was telling you about Lie groups, that Lie groups encode the symmetries, for example, of a physical system, and that the representation of Lie groups is more or less the way that they act on vector spaces. And to make use of the symmetry through representation theory, you have the direct action of a Lie group on a vector space. Now, if we get a little bit more specific about graph theory, 
uh, there is something where that we need to understand that it's permutation invariance and permutation equivariance. So let's have a look. At first, we have the assumption that the graph has no edges. So we just have a set of nodes V. And now we say in each node, I can encode some information, let it called be features. And these features we call X of I for node I. And if we stack all the information of all the nodes in our graph together, we get a node feature matrix. And we encode this with uh, X. And X is our feature matrix of X1 to Xn, given N nodes in our graph. Now, what is interesting is about permutation. And you know, a permutation matrix on a vector, as shown here, is a very simple matrix multiplication with a permutation matrix. And if you want to have a permutation like indicated here, 2, 4, 1, 3, you have here your permutation matrix, your vector x1 to x4, and you get then exactly x2413. So permutation matrix, great. We have an invariance function that works on a set of nodes, but what we are interested in is permutation equivariance. And so on these beautiful slides from DeepMind, uh, I will show you that there is a very easy permutation invariant definition. And this is the last line here. You have a function f. And we say that f is permutation equivariant if for all permutation matrices p, I just showed you one, that the function f on p of x is equal to the permutation matrix p on f on x. And with this permutation equivariant definition, we can have some general blueprint. And this is beautifully presented here in the next slide. And there's some, some really some deep insights in this slide. So just follow. We have that we have a equivariant set function that is transforming each node input xi into a latent vector hi. So you remember representation learning, we had a node and a graph and we embedded it in a vector space. And now we have a node input vector xi. Remember in our first approximation, we have no edges here. We will see the formulation with edges in two minutes. And we have here a transformation function into a latent vector hi. Think about representation learning, for example. And you say here a function psi of xi, where psi is any function applied in isolation to every single node. And if you st stack all the hi for all i's, you get your h, which, which is then simply a function of x. So we arrive at the blueprint or deep mind here. The slides are from deep mind. And they say stacking equivariant functions our f on x yields many useful function on sets. And here we have now an aggregator, and I just show you in graph sage the aggregator function, the differentiable aggregator function, and this is more or less the same, but now we have here an additional condition, and this is a permutation invariant aggregator that we have here that works on our uh, psi von x von i. And the aggregator can have different functions such as the sum, the average, the maximum, the mean, whatever. This is up to you to decide. So you have your function f on x. This is psi for, from the permutator invariant aggregator for all i of v on psi of x von i. So if we have, we keep this in mind, that we have this permutation invariant aggregator, we can see now that a lot of graphs that you are familiar with, yeah, and if you want to add the edges, you have simply here the equation for equivariant with edges, and you have here the adjacency matrix you are familiar with, so a very simple formula. We talked about the neighborhood of nodes in a graph, and then you have, if you want the recipe, you have here your graph, you have here your latent 
representation. And what you do, you take the node of a graph with a feature vector x. And from this xb, you see it denoted, you have a local neighborhood, a local environment on a graph topology where you have all your other nodes that we are within reach. And you have simply a function g depending on the node x, the feature vector of the node x, and uh, plus the feature vector of all the neighborhood of this particular node. So you have the information of the node and the neighborhood of the node. And this G now maps to, uh, what is it called? Our latent vector H of the node B. And if you have this notation, the very nice thing is that you can now define three different types of layers where all the different GNN models fall into. And this is really a meta description that is simply beautiful. Just for the notation, we have here our function F and we can call it now a GNN layer, a layer function. And our function, our the application of the local permutation invariant function G, I just showed you, you can call as diffusion, propagation, or message parsing. Message parsing is a term I hope you are familiar with. So, and now how to define G, writes DeepMind, or PTAR here in this sense, is a very intense area of research. And now this is a beautiful presentation where you see you have three flavors of the layers. And flavors, <laughs> this is from theoretical physics, uh, discovery of the quarks of the quark of the quantum field theory, the quarks, they also have different flavors. So it's a nice analogon from high energy physics here in graph network theory that you have the convolutional GNN. You know this from Thomas Kipp, for example, where you have simply here an aggregator on the function, but you have here fixed coefficients, C, I, J. Those fixed coefficients defined here, for example, in this presentation of H1i, our convolutional. Now, if you increase the complexity of this co fixed coefficient a little bit, and you make it dependent on x von i and x von j, so you can learn here this representation, this coefficient, if you want, then you have the attentional GNN. Or if you really increase the complexity to the max, where you have now that xi and xj, that the sender and the receiver nodes share some information. This is the message passing, as you might know it in the classical form. You have an aggregator. This is really that the message here, this phi von x von i and x von j, is computed. So this is really the highest complexity. And it is gorgeous that all the models that you know of GNN, you can more or less with this meta visualization include in one of these three classes. Let's have a look at the first convolutional GNN. This is the graph convolutional by Thomas Kipp. I already had a video on this and you see here, this is category one, attentional, the GAT from the author of this uh, slides, Peter Will. Velikovic had, is one of the, the, the geniuses who invented this as this act in a, this aggregation of the neighborhood with implicit weights via uh, attention. This is our A from X from I, X from J. And then of course, the most complex representation on this meta level, if you want, you have here the message passing neural networks as you know it, or the graph nets or whatever. Uh, formulation. You know about this where you have really compute arbitrary vectors or messages to be sent across the edges between the sender and the receiver and of course uh, for all of the neighborhood. So this is a beautiful representation from all the different models that you can understand which kind of H von I representation uh, falls into one of these three baskets. And if we want to go even a step further and let me have a look how they did it, because they presented this beautifully here also, 
Yeah, short interrupt. Of course, you know that the transformers, and we are looking now for graph transformer models, are graph neural networks. I showed you already in one of my last video here that the publication, The Gradient 2020 by Joshi. And if you follow this article here, you can have, with a lot of mathematics, uh, verify that transformers are indeed graph neural networks. And he states here that they have the flavor of attentional flavor. So it is the middle basket of our three baskets. And the sequential structure information is injected through the positional embeddings. Very interesting thing, but we want to go full in for the whole graph BERT model. And now we have a short uh, sidestep for Fourier transformation. I hope you are familiar with Fourier transformation. To sum it up, there is some mathematics involved in this. If you apply it on graphs, you should know a little bit about eigenvalues and eigenbases. And there is, we want our convolutions to commute. The adjacency matrix, you form, you choose a specific form, but main key point is you have, your, your main object is the Laplacian, the Laplacian matrix. And you know, this is defined as the difference between the degree matrix and the adjacency matrix. And it captures all the adjacency properties in a mathematically convenient way. This is beautiful. You see here a very simple example of a Laplacian. And then you apply some graph Fourier transformation. Would be too much if you go into the deep of this, but the essence is, yes, we can use this idea to run transformers, the transformers you are familiar from natural language processing NLP. <laughs> Uh, this transforms over general graph structures. And this is exactly what we have been looking for. Is it possible that the success BERT or BERT transformer models had on sentence encoding, for example, as BERT, to have here a similar success stories with graph transformers? And indeed, as you can see here, there is a publication by Trividi and Brisson. And if you want to have a look at this, I will leave you a link from our archive, a generalization of transformer networks to graph. And yes, if you jump right into the PDF, it's from January, 2021. So we are now at the end of 2021. So you can imagine that the whole year, there was a lot of work on this topic. And here you have it, graph transformer layer, the Laplacian eigenvectors as a positional encoding lambda. This is great if you want to jump right into this it's not a trivial representation but this is the documentation you should be familiar with but if we go back so i think this is it for today we started at the very beginning with graph sage remember we had this algorithm one where we had our differentiable aggregator functions that those functions are learned and if we add nodes to our network we can simply do this without training the whole network, without embedding the whole network again, like we had to do with node 2 vec or some other deep walks. Then we went on and then we went on and we found a beautiful mathematical description where all our GNN layer models fit into a convolutional structure, an attentional structure and some message passing structure. And we even reached out to the sky to discover if there's a graph BERT model available. And if you're interested in the current research of 2021, just go to archive and just enter graph BERT and you got quite a lot of current publication of this year uh, who specialized exactly in this particular topic. I think this is it for today. Thank you for your attention and I see you in the next video.